hopefully it all flows is what I'm hoping. But um, I'll start today with something that we've all been through, um, and it's a parable that we all know very well. But I'm going to start with a uh, Rich Mullins song, of course, um, that uh, talks about this, and this is what got my head thinking about it. So, But uh, the chorus starts with this, and everybody used to tell me big boys don't cry. Well, I've been around enough to know that that was the lie that held back the tears in the eyes of a thousand prodigal sons. We are children no more. We have sinned and grown old. We And our father still waits as he watches down the road to see the crying boys come running back to his arms and be growing young, growing young. So, so let's turn to Luke 15 real quick. Talk about the prodigal son, something that we've all been through and that we unfortunately might go through again and again and again. <laughs> uh, and let's look at this, uh, this parable, Luke 15, verse 11. He said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of your property. He divided his livelihood between them. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all, all of this together and traveled into a far country. And there he wasted his property with riotous living. So the son decides he wants to go his own way. He doesn't want to be and conform like his dad. And he wants what is his or supposed to be his. And he goes away and lives riotously, he lives different than his father. When he had spent all of it, spent all of it, there arose a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the pig, and into the fields to feed the pigs. So you see, he starts to need something, and his father's not the first thing that comes to his mind. It's, well, this guy can help me. This guy from a foreign land of a different country, he can help me. Uh, and and he's going to help me with this great job, right? <laughs> so feeding pigs. Uh, and that's what the son is thinking. He wanted to fill his belly with the, husk of the, with the husk that the pigs ate, but no one gave him any. But when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I am dying with hunger? I will get up and go to my father and will tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. He arose and came to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to celebrate. One thing I want to note here is he finally gets his stuff together. He starts thinking, well, my father, he has that love, like I read in that chorus there. And the father sees him afar off. It's like the father is almost waiting for him, waiting for him to come down the road. He knows he's going to be back, and he waits anxiously for him. And he sees him afar off. He's looking way, way out there. And then he doesn't wait for him to get there. He rushes out to see him. Now his elder son was in the field. As he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. It begins, okay, yeah. He called one of the servants to him and asked what was going on and said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fat, fatted calf because he has received him back safe and healthy. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore the father came out and he begged him. But he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you and never disobeyed a commandment of yours. But you never gave me a goat that I may celebrate with my friends. Sounds like a real party, doesn't it? A goat. But when this, your son came, who has devoured your living with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it was appropriate to celebrate and be glad for this. Your brother was dead and is alive again, and he was lost. He was lost and is found. 
you know, that echoes kind of that parable, um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, uh, the guys working in the field, how the guys that worked longer, they, they're like, why aren't we getting more, which is what the son has um, said, the elder son. But you notice that the father tells him, hey, he still comforts him. He doesn't really uh, chide him and say, hey, you're being real negative. Get, get in the house now. He says, hey, man, you are always with me, and all that I have is mine. All that, I ha- all that is mine is yours. You've got everything that's mine. Um, and he says, you're always with me. And I think that's an attitude we should have because we're not, you know, when you're looking at the parable of the uh, – the workers, the ones that work longer, sometimes we tend to think that we're the ones coming in, and so, or we're the longer working ones. We're the ones that have been there all day, but we're not. Sometimes we're the ones that are coming in. We're the late ones, and we still get that reward. But even if you're working longer, everything you have, or everything the Father has, is there, and you have that much more time with the Father. And that's a, a story, a parable about our changing, our coming to the Father, finally, um, our initial change, maybe baptism right then at that moment. We, we come to him and we say, hey, we were foolish, help me, save me. And then uh, we become that son again. And sometimes, like I said, we have to repeat, unfortunately, this process. But there's a celebration and there's an anxious anticipation for God waiting for you to come back home. Um, If we go to the beginning of Luke 15, and I'll start in verse 3, he told them this parable. Which of you men, if you had 100 sheep and lost one of them, would leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that was lost until he found it? When he has found it, he carries it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes, or rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And I tell you that even so, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repeats than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, if she had ten drachma coins, if she lost one drachma coin, wouldn't light a lamp, sweep the house, and seek diligently until she found it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me. For I have found the drachma which I had lost. Even so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner repenting. And that's the attitude God has. We get lost. We stray. We roll under the couch. We fall between a floorboard. He walks by the counter and goes, I thought I left Cody there. And, but we're missing. And he tears the house apart like this woman did. He, while holding on, to the other coins while holding on to the rest of us like he did with his son he's longing waiting for him to come home while holding on to his other son i bring the, this up and the small relation because uh or a small example because lately we've been talking a lot about giving all freddie mentioned it i know kyle and, and freddie mentioned last uh week about how we try to find the time to you know get get in and read the Bible and and be lost in that word a little bit. Um, And I say we need to do that because God is all in with us with those parables that he just showed, that he's constantly longing, waiting for us, constantly going out of his way to bring us back home, to make us see the light, bring us back to his son. So let's turn to... Let's talk about going all in and how we can be that son that he says, everything I have is yours. You are with me always. Luke 14, that chapter right before that. We're reading backwards today. Luke 14, starting in verse 15. And one of those that sat at the table with him heard these things. He said to him, blessed is he who will feast in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A certain man made a supper, and he invited many people. And he sent out his servant at supper time to tell those who were invited, Come, for everything is ready now. And as they all, as one began to make excuses, 
The first said to him, I have bought a field, I must go and see it. Please have me excuse. Another said, I have bought five yoke, yoke of oxen, and I must go try them out. Please have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I can't come. They gave excuses. They didn't want to, to come. That servant came and told his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the maimed, the maimed blind, and lame. The servant said, Lord, it is done as you commanded, and there is still room. The Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you that none of those men who were invited will taste of my supper. He's talking about the Pharisees and letting them know, and he's basically telling the Pharisees, You've been called to this supper, and you're not coming. So he goes for the poor, the blamed, or the blind, the maimed. Um, and then he goes out to the highways, people that are outside of the city, people that um, aren't his people. And he calls them, too, to this marriage supper. And thank God he did, because that's us, <laughs> everybody that's spread out. But we also do these. We have these same excuses for why we can't get, get around to doing those things that we need to do, to studying, to, to doing some charitable work, to to just sitting down and reading this word. Uh, like these people use, I bought a field. I have five yoke of oxen. We have things that are important. This guy just got married. That's important, but it's not everything. It's not the thing you need to be focused on. You're being called to a marriage supper. And we all have work getting in our way. We have lives, we have other little things bugging us <laughs> and we tend to shoo off the important things to go do those things that are futile in the end they don't last they don't make any sense really rather than heading to this marriage supper and being part of the feast let's keep reading 1425 now great multitudes were going with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and doesn't hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever doesn't bear his own cross and come after me can't be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, doesn't first sit down and count the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Or perhaps when he has laid a foundation is not able to finish. Everyone who sees begins to mock him, saying, This man... to." This man began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or what king, as he goes to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else while, yet, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an envoy and asks for conditions of peace. So therefore, where whoever of you who doesn't renounce all that he has, he can't be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes flat and tasteless, with what do you season it? It is fit neither for the soil or the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears, let him hear. So you see, as he keeps going on, he's telling you, come after me, follow me. Don't think about those things of the world. You don't build a tower just to lay a foundation. And you don't go to war without thinking of the cost. Sometimes I think when we, we think about trying to, I'll use the studying example because it's, it's an easy thing to, to relate to, about finding that time. And we think, well, I've got to find some time to, you know, essentially it's put more God in your life. And rather than trying to think about putting, time, or putting God into your life, I think we need to think about putting our life into God, if that makes sense. Because we have something, God, the Father, that's this, that, that big. You know, to quote another Rich Mullen song, time can't contain him. He fills eternity. Just think about that real quick. He fills eternity. And heaven stretches to hold him. That's another line from there. That's a relation, something that can't be contained. We try to put in to 15 minutes every day or a day during the week. And it's not possible. 
And that going all in is renouncing everything. Like he says here, it's renouncing all. It's renouncing your life and taking that life and putting it in his and fitting your life around him or inside of him. That's what giving your all. And it's not the things we do. It's the humility that we have to see also. It's the changing we have to do. Just like the prodigal son saw. He said, my ways aren't working for me. I have to go back to my father. I have to go back that way. This is not going to work. I'm starving. I'm hungry. And I deal with pigs all day. What fun is that? I'll go back to my father. So when you have those chances to be humble, to look at something maybe a different way, to act on that little thing that maybe you just, the spirit just goes, you need to go do that. You need to maybe not say anything this time. That is going all in. Not just the 15 minutes, not the extra 15 minutes that you do in a room by yourself. It's also listening to it outside that room. Showing patience, righteousness, humility, love. That is all going all in and not being yourself anymore. Proverbs 4, 7, I'll just read this real quick. It says, wisdom is supreme. Get wisdom. Yes, though it costs all your possessions, get understanding. To, uh, to start closing up, we were lost and we've been found through no effort of our own. It's only by grace, because God searched for that coin. He searched for the sheep. He waited for his children to come back. Because that's what he does. He goes all in on us. He's there for us, just like we need to be all in for him. Passover's coming up soon. I'll just read John 3.16 real quick. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I know that's a verse that probably gets overused, not really looked at deeply, but that's how in he is, is that, that he gave his only begotten son. I'm going to read that last uh the last chorus on it, because I think it kind of sums up what I was talking about, about the changing that we need to do in going all in. Because going all in isn't just saying something, it's, it's going all in. Um, and running back to those arms that you, that you need desperately to change. Uh, and when I was thought that I was all alone, it was your voice I heard calling me back home. And I wonder now, Lord, what it was that made me wait so long. And what kept you waiting on me for all that time? I was, your, was your love stronger than my foolish pride? Will you take me back now? Take me back and let me be your child. Because I've been broken now. I've been saved. I've learned to cry and I've learned how to pray. And I'm learning. I'm learning even I can be changed. And everybody used to tell me big boys don't cry. Well, I've been around enough to know that that was the lie that held back the tears in the eyes of a thousand prodigal sons. Well, we are children no more. We have sinned and grown old. Our father still waits as he watches down the road to see the crying boys come running back to his arms and be growing young, growing young. I hope we can all stay in those arms. Be that son that has had it all. Go all in with him. And let's stop being prodigals.